Pauline, talking about advocacy and the long experience you have in the field, you've been working at very different levels, uh, from the national to the regional and international. So what would you say are the major achievements that have been made uh, through gender advocacy for media justice and for gender equality in the media over the past uh, 20 years? Well, we could almost stretch it to 25 because I was privileged to be at the Beijing conference in uh, China uh, in 1995. So I have followed this issue since then. And uh, the first achievement, obviously, was to get Section J of the Beijing Platform for Action to get it on the agenda. Of course, it is the last section. And uh, one of my um, uh, concerns as a gender media activist is that we always we tend to think about media as an afterthought, as the final thing. You know, when we've ticked everything else, oh, by the way, the media, you know. But it was put there. And because it was put there, we've had every five years the Global Media Monitoring Project, um, which of course played a massive role uh, just in terms of, of data. And what we've done in our sub-region has been to take the global study and to give it much more depth um, and regional content through much more in-depth uh, monitoring, but also locating that monitoring within media training institutions. It's done by, by students, by journalists. Um, and our research tells us that those young people um, who do monitoring when they train, they later on become journalists, editors, and so on, that that makes a major difference to the way they see things and the way they do things uh, later on in life. So it's been put on the agenda. Here we are in New York. Uh, and one of the sub-themes at the CSW this year is media in a hugely changing environment. I think that's what's challenging about media is that now it's not just media in the traditional sense, it's new media as well uh, and technology and, and, and all the related issues and advertising and how do we uh, wrap our minds uh, around that. We just heard today at the session we were in about this UN Women initiative, which I think is amazing, this unstereotyped advertising in a 500 billion a dollar's worth of advertising uh, every year that reinforces stereotypes in, in, in very direct um, and, and indirect way. And, and imagine if that money were being used to promote gender equality <laughs> rather than to stereotype uh, women and reinforce stereotypes. You know, these were conversations we were not having uh, 20, 25 years ago. In my experience with editors um, uh, and so on in the region, I mean, I could give dozens of, of personal accounts of male editors who, when we began our monitoring, said to us, we don't have a problem, we just talk, we talk to people, you know, we, we, we get the news, that's our business, you know? And then, through seeing themselves, you know, we call our monitoring mirror on the media, look at yourself, you know, look at the man in the mirror, you know? And what are you seeing? The lights go on. And then, the policy works follows. Today, we've launched um, this online tool, it's also part of our efforts to keep a pace of the times because a lot of media monitoring has been inc incredibly manual and therefore very time consuming and also open to error. Now when you make it easy, you make it simple, uh, tick, 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 you know, then uh, not only us as activists can do the monitoring but the media itself can do their own monitoring and use it uh, to inform editorial content. So it's not an overnight miracle as we've seen but I think you've seen in the numbers we presented on Southern Africa. Uh, that in one country you can have double, literally, I'm in mean, a country like Malawi, very rural, very conservative, very patriarchal in nature, beginning at 12% women sources, uh, ending up today at 21. Maybe it's not massive, but that's an almost doubling, you know, in, in 10 years in that one country. You know, that is tangible change. And maybe one very last thing is uh, we, we do see changes, and I think of my own country in Italy where we are seeing media, corporation, including the public uh, sector, being a lot more concerned. Uh, what we are not witnessing yet is the kind of connection between the media organization, advocacy groups, uh, and policy making, which seems to be the case uh, in the experience of Southern Africa. So what, what is the recipe there? What is the <laughs> magic? Yeah. If I'm presenting a perfect picture, it's far from perfect. Uh, but um, I think one of the challenges with the media is that you know, we tend to think of the media as this homogenous mass. And, and the media is not that. You know, we have to segment it, and we do. So you have the public media, and there's a certain message that we take to the public media, which is you know, taxpayers' money, um, commitments made by governments, our SADC protocol on gender development is very progressive on gender media issues. 
Uh, these are commitments that have been made by our governments. You have to deliver on them. Then there is the private media. We go with a slightly different message to them, which is enlightened self-interest. Who are your audiences? Who are you trying to reach? Um, how do you best reach them? Demonstrating that gender responsive reporting um, is good for democracy, but it's also good for business. And then a very interesting phenomenon uh, in our region and globally is community media. We see this as very exciting because this is a space uh, that women can claim much more easily. <clears throat> they can walk into their community radio station and literally grab the microphone, as you saw mm -hmm. in the image that I shared, and, 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 and claim the space. Uh, community radio stations can be used uh, to report cases of violence, of children missing, of police, um, uh, local police stations that are not being responsive to their needs. Technology, of course, is contributing hugely to this. We're doing a project right now in Tanzania where I'm learning uh, very interesting things about uh, radio stations in a suitcase, literally, uh, that are starting up in remote rural areas and reaching far bigger audiences you know, than the commercial uh, broadcasting stations because they're broadcasting in the local languages and they're dealing with local issues. Uh, our research shows us that women's sources are much higher, actually, in community media than anywhere else. So this decentralizing uh, of media and the greater accessibility, which of course is then also closely linked to greater um, universal access to the internet um, and, and, and to technology, which is why that conversation today was so important because um, in Africa, perhaps more so than in any other continent, we haven't had to wait for all the cumbersome infrastructure we've leapfrogged into the fourth revolution without ever going through landlines and everything else. So ironically, we have a bit of an advantage there.